Good morning, evening, and afternoon, everybody. Check it out, check it out. I'm here with what has become my darling. We have Mono Red Midrange for the Magic Origins standard format. Let me walk you through it. We will start with the lands. We have 22 mountains. No muss, no fuss. You can get to four, which if you notice is as high as this elevator goes. Um, you know, 22 I've arrived at as the right number after playing iterations of the deck with uh, 21 and even as low as 20 mana or 20 mountains with one in the board. Uh, this is just uh, the happy medium or rather probably just the correct number. Moving on, we have three Monastery Swift Spears, two Zergo Bell Strikers. This is um, probably correct as far as one drops go. We still have a uh, higher than average, like a 46, 47% chance to get a one drop creature in our opener. So that's fine. Uh, our spells are Wild Slash, four of them and that'll be a theme in this deck. It is kind of a burn deck slash prowess deck with uh, a top end that focuses on ripping through the deck and getting threats and ending the game very quickly, as quickly as possible for a mid-range deck. Um, the one of Titan Strength is just in deference to the fact that um, we can kill very quickly with um, some one-mana instance and our prowess creatures the second of which is the four of a new card abbot of carol keep which is insane so far definitely a great performer um let's see this thing can with uh, its prowess triggers and in multiples uh do some real work like you have two of these you cast one removal spell for the big guy, you know, their big blocker, a Corsair Crucifix, for instance, and then you're you're sixing them. Like, it's no joke. You can do that as early as turn four. Um, next up, as far as two drop creatures go, we have Eidolon of the Great Revel, which is just uh, unarguably powerful, potent in the current environment, three drops uh, and lower. Pretty much define the format, um, with a few exceptions. For instance, Megamorph cards, um, you know, premium, and, uh, and most black removal, except for now Languish. Uh, anyway, Eidolon, you know, enough has been said about it. It is eternal played. It's very good. You'll notice I have Stoke in the uh, three and four drop uh, slots. I was just doing a little bit of a thought exercise there uh, and arguably due to uh convoking we can play it in, as a uh you know lower on the curve anyway uh realistically we're not playing it on turn three or four though and then as far as our spells at two go four lightning strike easy peasy also um unassuming though it is kind of a boring card it is one of our very quick and easy answers to uh, Fleece Mane Lion, which is a card that uh, our deck is kind of a dog to. Just uh, green decks uh, give us trouble, but we have significant uh, sideboard resources to dedicate to that. Uh, moving right along, Flame Wake Phoenix, part of our uh, suite of wing conditions. We like having these because they recur very cheaply so uh, as long as we're able to have one of our five four mana four power creatures out we can be again hitting like for six the next turn if we have a flame wake phoenix in our graveyard um, other than that it's uh, you know a hasty flying threat so get in there very cool new card from Origins. This and Abbott are the big changes, and then we have one other card that we'll get to, uh, which you can read the name of right now if you are, in fact, looking at your monitor. All right. Exquisite Firecraft. Fantastic. Very good. Um, 
rate as far as damage for mana. Sorcery speed is not a big deal because it plays into our game plan more often than not, which is using this to remove a blocker and then doing significant amounts of damage with prowess creatures. Um, it's also, you know, it targets both creatures and players. So just flexible, cheap, um, and works with our game plan. Perfect card for us. It's a four of. So that's the trend. We're four of on our burn spells. Uh, up through the, uh, the slots here, because we also have four of Stoke the Flames. Uh, moving right along, Outpost Siege is a one of. Avaricious Dragon is the other new card from Magic Origins, which I am very excited to try. So far, I've had pretty good results. It did its job as a finisher. So basically, my theory goes, in games that go long, control uh, versus obs on control versus... Um, I don't know if Blue Black or uh, Esper Dragons is still going to be a thing in this environment, but versus the really slugfest mid-range decks as well, landing an Outpost Siege is already super good. An Outpost Siege and an Avaricious Dragon as your win condition package, you'll note here we have the sideboard to do that, is, uh, you know, cannot be overstated. Like, that's uh, an insane amount of card advantage for red. So you're uh, basically drawing a four-card hand every turn. Because you draw, well, no, three. You draw, you exile, and you draw again. So yeah, you get, you get to look at three cards a turn. By the turn that you're executing the plan, you have the mana to cast to maybe even three of the spells that you get to look at. Um, and you're just tearing through your deck, getting to your win cons. So, uh, and then Thunderbreak Regent is a card that punishes your opponent for casting spells, much like Eidolon. Um, it's a four mana, four, four flyer, which is exactly what our deck wants. Um, yeah, it kills the opponent. It kills them dead. So that is the deck. Um, I'm a, uh, I can't say enough good things. It really, uh, it does very well. It's very consistent. Um, I would recommend it to anybody who uh, is not immediately repulsed by the idea of playing mono red competitively. Now, moving on to the sideboard, and I, I assume that applies to you if you're watching this, but it may not. Uh, rending Volley, very good. Uh, efficient removal, which we can bring in in place of some of our burn. That's basically the theme for the sideboard, by the way, is uh, interchangeable burn packages to go up against the meta. So this is uh, addressing mostly Esper Dragon's opponents. However, it can be used to like um, take care of a Monastery Mentor or a Seeker of the Way at instant speed, which is very useful. Uh, even after they've gotten their prowess triggers, if they're threatening some life gain, uh, etc. Rending Volley. Good card, can't be countered. Uh, Roast, for our good friend, Siege Rhino. Also pretty okay against... Uh, my, it slips my mind. Um, heroic decks. Um, it just, you know, if, if you get into a uh, board stall with them, which sometimes you can if their guys get kind of big, you can roast a, uh, a heroic guy. Um, Siege Rhino, Tassiger, roast is good. Scouring Sands, Jeskai Tokens, uh, Atarka Red, or Atarka Goblins, I guess now, with Pile Driver. That's the moniker. Uh, anyway. You get a effective board wipe since this doesn't kill anything but uh, our abbots. And I believe if you put, yeah, yeah. Anyway, the abbot gets the, uh, the prowess trigger. So, oh, and it's your opponent's control. At any rate, Scouring Sands deals with uh, tokens quite effectively. Searing Blood, as a one of, this might not be correct, but I like it because there's a, uh, a, a large number of, like, uh, two toughness threats right now in the, um, the 
aggro decks, the Atarka decks. Obs on aggro isn't played that much, uh, which is really good for this deck, by the way, because we were also a dog to that with their Fleece Man Lions and their turn three Anaphenses and their Banishing our Phoenixes. Anyway, Searing Blood, good uh, efficient removal, something that we can cast with Eidolon on the board and not feel bad because it, we're still being ahead on damage while removing threats. Three Bathe in Dragonfire. Um, this card I may want to rethink now that we have main board Exquisite Firecraft. This is day one of the format though, so these can come in um, probably never. This was an anti-courser of Crufix tool, but I mean, dang. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving right along, we have three outpost siege because sometimes, dang it, you just want to look at extra cards and generate that uh, red card advantage. Um, or even, and this was more true of the tokens list, but you could choose uh, dragons. I know it's crazy. And uh, stand to uh, make your opponent think twice about using sweepers, uh, mass removal. And that might come back into consideration against decks that run languish. Um, and then we have one more avaricious dragon. Just because I, uh, I think that the non-spell or the non-creature aspect of Outpost Siege plays better with our um, prowess creatures. But dragon can also, as I mentioned earlier, rip us low-cost non-creature spells to also uh, get there with prowess creatures and attacks for four in the air. So if we want six, if we want four Thunderbreak Regents and, it, and an Avaricious Dragon in a matchup, odds are we're gonna want four Thunderbreak Regents and two Avaricious Dragons. Um, other than that, I've only had time to run a few matches, but I have a uh, flawless victory. <laughs> A record, a good record so far. I've beaten Atarka Goblins twice. Um, haven't gotten to play Obzon, Esper, um, Red Green Devotion, which I believe Bathe will probably find, uh, keep, maintain its importance in. Being able to deal four damage is just so important that Stoke and Firecraft might not cut it. We might want, like, you know. 11 ways to deal for damage. It's just that important. Um, because that matchup is also um, not favored for us. Anyway, to put a cap on it, Mono Red Midrange is a deck that I've been working on. I don't know if this particular list is popularized at all yet, but this is the natural evolution of... Uh, last season's list, which ran um, Lightning Berserkers instead of uh, Abbots. We had slightly more Titan Strengths. We had one more Zergo, one more Eidolon, uh, one more Outpost Siege. So we've, we've shaved some things to make room for the Exquisite Firecraft, the Abbot, the Avaricious Dragon, um, and I think it's been definitely worth it. I... Uh, enjoy playing the deck. It's very consistent. It's very fast. It has a good variety of removal. And yeah, overall, uh, for a standard deck, it's fairly inexpensive. I've been buying the cards as I go, so it's hard to estimate. But uh, maybe I'll make another video, uh, you know, highlighting like a, a card hoarder shopping cart uh, excursion building the deck if there's interest. So go ahead and hit that like button. I hope this video is informative for you and uh, at least informs uh, your sideboarding decisions in your own standard matchups. Uh, I personally can't say enough good things about it. I could make a much longer video just gushing about it. But take a good look, enjoy, and if you want to see matches featuring this deck, you, you know the best and possibly only place to do that is my channel. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next Origins Standard Mono Red video. All right, I'm Max, signing off. See you later.